look to the Parent Guardian Cookie Training 2021 for your troop. This year's cookie season runs from Saturday, February 6th to Sunday, March 28th. Now, per a recent Girl Scout update, um, girls can actually start selling on February 1st. That means she can start taking orders from her family and friends. She just won't have the cookies on hand to start delivering until the 6th. This year's cookie lineup includes one brand new cookie, the Toast Yay. Um, it's a French toast inspired cookie. It's actually really good. Um, I've tried it before. And it's also the last year for s'mores. So if you have any customers who are um, a fan of s'mores, definitely let them know. Now there will be a cookie that will replace s'mores, but currently there's no news of it just yet. A very big change that will be happening this year is that all cookies are $5 per package. Last year, the main lineups were four and our gluten freeze were five. Now this year, every single one of these cookies are $5, including the gluten-free. Also, same as previous years, the gluten-freeze are in limited quantity. Um, so the troop will have a certain amount until it runs out. After that, the troop will not be able to order more. Um, in terms of cookies and their popularities, Thin Mints are still our number one seller. So if you do stock up on anything for inventory, I would recommend Thin Mints. Next on the lineup would be Caramel Delights um, and, you know, kind of an equal playing field with peanut butter patties. So I would say these are our big threes, Caramel Delights, Thin Mints, peanut butter patties. Next up, Lemonades are also very popular. So depending on who you have as your customers, lemonades can, um, you know, add up to as much as these big threes, or it could be, you know, a very good amount, but still not as high in quantity as these. Um, the Toastier, since this is the first year, we're not quite sure on how well it's going to do, but it is very good. So um, I do imagine that it will sell um, pretty quick once your customer gets a taste, buys their first package, and perhaps they might buy more. Our shortbreads and peanut butter sandwich typically do not sell as high. Um, you will have certain customers that really prefer one of these two and they will buy a little bit more of that, but I would recommend not stocking up on peanut butter sandwiches or shortbread and maybe just order as you need for those. Um, for s'mores, again, it's a hit or miss. Um, it maybe doesn't sell as high as lemonades, but it's still out there. Um, and it also depends on who your customers are. You will have some people that are more favorite and the others, um, when they have to make a decision, they will most likely pick lemonades and then one of these big threes a little bit more. Um, I would recommend if you do not have family or friends who are gluten-free, I would not stock up on these and I would not order much of these at all. Um, most likely your customers will be choosing one of these lineups of the cookies instead of the gluten-free. Now this year for rewards, um, we have our Super Squad and that includes our instant reward lineup of these fluffy keychains um, ranging from elephant and the highest would be the jellyfish. And then, of course, we have other items in the lineup here. Um, how girls earn the rewards is that for every package she sells, she will earn, it would lead up to reward items, and it would always also lead up to cookie dough earning. So let's say, for example, if she sells 310 packages of cookies, she will earn the B, as well as all of the instant reward items um, that follow underneath that, that led up to the D. So it's very, it's all cumulative. Um, so let's say at that 310 packages, she would earn $82 in cookie dough as well. Cookie dough um, is her program credit. She can use cookie dough to purchase items in the shop, to register for camp, to perhaps renew her membership next year, anything related to Girl Scouts she can use cookie dough on. So we do have another perk is that if she were to decide, you know, I don't want this bumblebee plush, I have a lot of stuffed animals at home already, um, she could make that decision of swapping the bee out for additional cookie dough. 
So all of the items that you do see the cash um, graphic right here, that means those are eligible to be swapped out for additional cookie dough. So let's say if it's 310 package at $82 for cookie dough, if she swaps out the B for more cookie dough, she would end up with $87 of cookie dough. Now, even if she switches the B, she will still be able to keep these items here. So she can make the decision on specific items on which items she wants to switch out. In addition to cookie dough and rewards, patches will also be earned. So you'll kind of see um, what she needs to do in order to earn these patches. All of the reward items, um, except for the instant rewards, will be mailed out by the vendor directly to your girl at the end of cookie season. So usually around end of April, early May is when everything um, is completely processed and ready to be mailed out. Um, the only things that you will be receiving from your troop leader would be the instant reward items. So these instant reward items will be received upon picking up your next order of cookies. As soon as you order 36 packages, um, your girl will earn the elephant, for example. Patches will also be mailed out by the vendor, not the troop leader. On top of what your girl will earn, the troop will also earn incentives. So the troop will earn troop proceeds, and troop proceeds is listed right here. So for every package that the, each girl in the troop sells, the troop will earn, you know, up to 65 cents per package. In addition to troop proceeds, um, the troop will also earn experiences. So that usually counts um, towards a per girl average. So um, if the troop average sells over 230 packages um, per troop, um, that's the average of how many girls who are selling in the troop versus how much money um, or packages the girls sold. They would earn the Gimme S'more Mud Run, for example. So ways to sell cookies, of course, during the pandemic, um, we are definitely trying our best to make sure that everything is contactless and do have resources for families as well as um, troop leaders for how to sell. For this year, girls can sell online, in person, through troop booths and lemonade stands. For online sales, there are two options. Um, new this year, a customer can actually go onto the girl's website, pay directly on there, and then ask for the girl to um, deliver it to their door. So that means um, if, let's say, your next door neighbor wants to order cookies, um, you can just share the link to her website to them. They would get on there, they would run their credit card. Now the credit card will not be processed until the cookies are delivered. So once you see that, oh, uh, Bob next door wants to buy four packages of lemonades, you'll take a look at your inventory and say, oh, okay, it looks like I do have the lemonades. I will go drop it off at his porch. And then I would get back on the website and identify or that the cookies have been delivered. Once you have identified that with the system, um, the credit card will then be processed. Now let's say, for example, you ran out of lemonades. Um, then that's when you'll contact the customer saying, hey, you know, um, I'm going to get more of lemonades to deliver to you, but um, just wanted to give you a heads up, give you let your customers know. Now let's say if you're completely out of inventory and you won't be getting inventory for a while or you're just done with your sale in general. Um, you do have the option to decline that request um, and the, cr the credit card from the customer will not be processed. Your troop leader will also have the ability to help void those orders for you. Now the second option for online um, complete contactless um, sales would be direct ship. So this is especially good if you have families who live far away. They can pay online through the website and have it shipped directly from the warehouse. Keep in mind that when it's shipped directly from the warehouse, it's still not um, taking a dip into your physical cookie inventory. So if you are someone that is wanting to um, minimize the inventory that you have, Perhaps direct ship might not be the best option if the customer has the ability to, you know, get the cookies from you directly. 
So that's kind of up to you. Um, the rec ship, uh, shipping costs. So Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa is actually paying um, for part of the shipping costs to kind of help the customers out. So if the customer orders between six to 12 packages, the shipping cost will only be $6. Um, uh, your troop does not um, have the answers or be able to make any shipping decisions um, on logistical um, changes or anything like that. We do have the email address to who you would contact if you had specific shipping questions. So ABC Smart Cookies Direct at westernfoods.com. So in-person sales, girl delivery from online order. So again, just what I said here, um, a customer can request that a girl delivers while paying for their cookies online. Going back to traditional order taking, um, that is still allowable. Um, you know, we want to do recommend to families to follow CDC guidelines to make sure that the girls are social distant, um, masks are worn, um, utilize your best precautions. Um, we want the girls to be safe during the cookie sale. Um, order taking means you would have the order card that the troop leader will give you and your girl can, um, you know, start calling relatives um, if she wanted to do door to door. And we can talk more about resources for door to door and, um, you know, staying distant at, um, in a later slide. But um, later on, once she knows what her customers are ordering, she will request cookies from her troop leader. And we'll talk more about that on how to request cookies. Um, direct sale, again, is when she has money or cookies on hand and the customers are giving her money, she gives the cookies right away. And it's a very direct transaction. Um, additional ways that customers can pay for their cookies is if um, parent guardians, if you have other cash apps just like Venmo, Zelle, and if that works for your customer, they can always um, you know, pay through that way and then your girl would drop the cookies on their porch or you know, drop it off at a spot to move away and then they can grab the cookies. So there are a lot of different ways that we can stay contactless during our sale. Um, smartcookies.com is the website where you and your girl will manage her inventory, track the online orders and you know, take a look at where she's placing. Now, everyone should have received a Smart Cookies um, email that um, prompted them to go create a login account from Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa or ABC Cookies. Um, I actually am not sure who was the one that sent it, but I think it was sent on January 19th. If you do not um, find that email um, or, you know, if it's not in your junk or spam box either, please email info at gsiowa.org. So that is I-N-F-O at G-S-I-O-W-A dot O-R-G to request a login. That is not something that your troop um, is in control of. So booth sales. Um, booth sales is uh, when uh, girls from a troop get together and, uh, you know, work at a booth. Um, booths are usually located in front of grocery chains or other high traffic um, areas that are deemed safe for girls and volunteers to be at. Um, uh, the inventory for the booth sales are used from the troops, so it is not your girl's inventory. So let's say if your girl was invited to participate in a booth, um, she leaves her cookies at home. She would be selling the troops inventory and not hers. A booth consists of at least two girls, so we need at least two girls to call it a booth. Um, it should be led by two volunteers um, to make sure we do have enough for ratio and also support. Um, the leader uh, sets the booth up. Now, if you're a parent guardian and you have connections to a local business that you want to suggest as a booth um, for the troop, um, definitely email your leader and let them know. Um, typically, um, booth sales are usually around two hours long. Um, the girls at the very end of the sale, what the troop leader will do is take the total packages that were sold and divide it evenly amongst the girls that worked at the booth. Um, now, most of the time it's divided evenly. Now, let's say if Susie um, 
you know, if the booth was 10 to noon and Susie only worked from 10 to 11 and then um, Ava and Abby worked from 10 to noon. So that's the scenario where the booth sales might not be divided evenly and it would be divided based on the hours. Um, so Susie might get a little less um, compared to Abby and um, Ava just because they worked longer. Um, if you have questions based on booths, let your troop leader know. Um, look out for email communication um, as your troop leader will be emailing you um, in regards to, you know, when our booth opportunities. Now we'll make sure that we utilize precautions so booth sales, um, masks are required, um, and social distancing are required as well. Lemonade stands, um, similar idea to booth. So it's again setting up um, a sales or a table, at, you know, in public whether it's in your front yard or, you know, at a local business. The main difference with lemonade stands is it's an individual girl run stand. That means the inventory comes from you and your girl and not the troop. Lemonade stands are something that parent guardians are um, the ones setting up and it's not related to the troop function or the troop leader is not the one to make the call on lemonade stands or, you know, the one to set it up. Um, one thing that I know Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa did indicate that we cannot do is we cannot set up a lemonade stand at the same location as where a council or troop secured booth is. So booth sales, these booth sales here. So for example, if um, there is a booth at Jordan Creek Mall, which there, there is, um, your girl cannot set up at the hot topic um, or you know like a specific shop in Jordan Creek or even out in the parking lot just because there is a booth in that area already. Um, so I would recommend contacting more of friends and family who own a business to see if your girl can you know set up a table outdoor indoor depending on how much space is in there um, and double checking to make sure that you know there isn't usually booths that are set up by troops. Um, now, if it's a small shop and they say, yeah, there's usually a booth, just make sure that it's not the same day and same time. It shouldn't be two booths, a booth and a lemonade stand at once in proximity. Um, other ideas that we are exploring would be drive through booths. Um, so, for example, we have a car that starts here to pay. They will drive to the other side um, to pick up their cookies. So, again, it allows customers to remain in their car and for our girls to remain socially distant. Um, and with the help of adults, we can load um, cookies in their trunk, um, have it be contactless. So just a couple of options that we are exploring. And we also are exploring virtual booths. That means it might be an online event where customers um, will know exactly where the link is. They would pay on there and then they would arrange for a different time to come pick up cookies uh, where we could, you know, um, have an event in a parking lot somewhere or a location that's safe um, to have customers, you know, drive by, pick up their cookies, and again, remain contactless. How customer pays for cookies. So customers can pay for cookies with cash, check, or credit card. Checks should be written out to Girl Scouts or Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa. Please, please review your customers' checks before you turn it into your troop leader. The reason being is we've had checks where the customers might have missing fields, they might write it out to the girl and not Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa. All of those mistakes um, will require the troop leader to contact or to figure out who that check belongs to, which girl, um, you know, was the one who turned in that check amongst all of the checks that they may have received from other girls. Um, so please um, help us save our time and your time by double checking the checks that your customers are turning in before um, you know kind of um, saying your goodbyes. So here's the process on how to request cookies from Kate. Um, the first step that you'll need to do is utilize this link here to submit your cookie order to Kate. We do ask that cookie orders are submitted by Saturday night at midnight or by midnight. Um, the reason why is Kate is required by Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa to submit the overall troop order for cookies on Sundays. So in order for her to properly um, request the uh, 
right amount of inventory, she needs to know your order no later than Saturday night. Um, there will be a pickup process um, that I will be talking about in the slides after. So three, so your for parent guardian, please make sure to submit this form um, if you want to order cookies. Um, now, of course, you don't have to. You don't have to order on a weekly basis. That's up to you. But if you do, please use this form. Please do not email or text or call Kate with your order. Um, that is not the best way to do it. Most likely is that she will be very busy throughout the week. Orders might be lost. Messages might not be read um, by the time that she's submitting orders um, as there's a lot, of goes, a lot of things that goes on on the back end for a troop leader during cookie season. Um, and this is the best way and the preferred way um, or the only way that we will take your cookie order. So the, the link to the form, um, here's an example of what the form looks like. This is the desktop version, and this is what you'll see on mobile. We recommend using your computer, um, just it's a little easier, but I know that's not always the case. Um, so just wanted to give you an example of what would be on mobile. The very first thing that we will ask you to mark off is that I understand that I am financially responsible for the cookies I order and am aware that the cookies are non-refundable. This means that once you get those cookies, um, if you are unable to sell them all, you are still financially responsible for what cookies are unsold. The reason is when Kate, as a troop leader, orders cookies from Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa, she is purchasing those cookies. Um, so that means by the end of the cookie season, she, the troop is financially responsible for those cookies. Now, if we do not have enough money or, you know, we have a parent guardian that did not pay all of the amount of cookies that they requested, the money that will be paid to Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa will be troop funds, which ultimately will impact the girls and that would defeat the purpose of this overall cookie sale. Um, so we do ask that you manage your inventory and make sure to order only what you need. Um, and we'll have a couple of resources and also um, protocols that I'll talk about in a little bit to kind of help you manage that and to make sure that you are not over ordering cookies. The second prompt will be asking you for the trip number and then your Girl Scouts name. The following page of the form will have um, the options for you to request cookies. Now you will see that there are specific um, increments that we are allowing you to order. This is only just for the first week. For the very first week of cookies, um, orders tend to be on the heavier side um, as everyone's wanting a certain amount of cookies. Um, we will have a special pickup date for you. Now, in order for us to get you in and out and to ease the process to keep us social distance and all of that, we do require that for the very first week only um, that you order in increments of six, um, 12. So a full case of cookies contains six packages. So half case would be six. Um, it's easier for us to give you your order by the case or by the half case that will save us so much time in breaking down all of those cases to get you like specific quantity. So just for the first week only. For the following weeks, we will customize these um, options so that way you can order specific to the amount that you want. The last page um, we will be asking you, is this a new order for the week? Um, is this an order that you made an error and you are correcting it now, aka we will be deleting um, the previous orders that you have submitted for the week, or if it's that you did submit, you know, a, pr a prior order this week and you had more customers and you need more cookies. So this is in addition to that. So we would be combining both of those orders together. Um, this is a way for us to understand a little bit more so that way we don't over or under or your cookies or, you know, we are playing the guessing game of what do they mean by this um, since I know they just submitted a cookie order just yesterday. Um, something new this year that we do want to implement would be pickup hours. So uh, Kate's pickup dates are Wednesdays and Fridays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and on Friday at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. When you submit your cookie order, uh, we would like you to indicate this. This is the way that it's going to help us prepare your order in advance as much as we can and to get you in and out. Um, at the end of your 
question um, at the end of the form, once you submit it on the confirmation screen, you will also have the option to save and print your P a PDF of what you have submitted. Now we do ask that, um, you know, never, we don't want to rely on technology so much. So we do ask that you jot down your order in advance or as you are placing it. So that way, just to make sure in case if the internet goes down or, you know, you get sidetracked and you accidentally, you know, X out of the screen, um, then, you know, you wouldn't be able to print it off. So I would just, you know, kind of um, err on the side of caution there and, you know, jot it down on your end as well. So the cookie pickup schedule, we will be having a weekly order um, deadlines and also weekly pickup dates. This is what the schedule looks like for Kate's troops. The very first order, um, we would like you to submit it on January 30th. So that's pretty much the end of this week. Um, when you submit that order, um, the earliest you can pick up would be Saturday the 6th, and that's the very first day any troop in Greater Iowa will be getting cookies. So we want to make sure, you know, everyone's at the, the same starting line there. The specific pickup hours would be from 9 to noon. Um, you will see that on your on that form, um, the online form, you will see that as an option um, when you submit your cookie request this week. Um, if you're not in a hurry to pick up cookies um, on that Saturday, you could always, um, you know, utilize the normal pickup hours of Wednesdays and Thursdays. Now, keep in mind that the Saturday pickup is a one time only. It is only for the very first week. Again, the order amount will be heftier. So we want to make sure that we have that third date and we want to make sure everyone has their cookies at the very start of cookie season. Um, the following weeks, um, everything will be kind of back into the pattern of um, if you need cookies to pick up the following week, make sure to place it, you know, that Saturday before by midnight, then you'd be able to pick it up here. So an easy way to think about it is this is week one, so it looks a little weird here. But then following that, it's submit week two, Saturday night, pick it up on Wednesday, Thursday, submit week three on the following Saturday, pick up week three on Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. The cookie program ends on March 28th. That is the very last day for any type of sale. So online, in person, whatever it is, that is the very last day. Um, troop payments are due. So 100% of payments that you owe to the troop must be due on 31st of March. Um, if you are a parent guardian that does not pay in full amount by the 31st, what Kate is going to do is submit a girl shortage form to Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa. And what that means is Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa will be the one to contact you to figure out the payment plan or, you know, um, how you are going to be paying for this amount. If you are unresponsive um, or, you know, Girl Scouts of Greater Iowa can't get a hold of you, what they are going to do is um, send that to a collections agency. Um, now, with that being said, we are going to, you know, do our due diligence to make sure that families are not over ordering cookies. So what we are going to do is if you are requesting cookies um, this week, and you request more cookies the following week, what we are going to assume is you are requesting more cookies because you sold some of the cookies from the prior week. So that means you should have some money on hand to turn in. We will be asking for, you know, partial payment um, every time when you pick up cookies, um, you know, after that first week just to kind of make sure there's a good balance. If we start to not see any money turned in from you, but you're still requesting cookies, that is when we will most likely not process your orders. We will not be giving you any more cookies until you turn in some money. Um, now, with that being said, um, upfront payment for cookies is not necessary. So the cookies that you place on January 30th to pick up on Saturday or the following week, we do not expect upfront payment because that's the very first time you're picking up cookies. We do not require for you to foot out your own money for cookies. It's mainly the following weeks that now that we know that you are consistently requesting for cookies, um, there should be that money stream coming in. Um, for customers who are paying online, um, you do not have to submit that money. Um, so when they're paying directly online, that should talk to the system that we have and it should update on there. So what you would just do is, you know, deduct that amount, um, you know, from what you're actually physically paying back to the troop. 
And if there's any confusion or you need to, you know, us to help calculate that, please let your troop leader know. So how to pick up cookies. Um, during the order form, the field over here that asks you uh, when you're going to pick it up. So make sure you jot that down. So you are going to arrive during those designated hours that you have selected and arrive at our Hickman office. So that's right next to Living History Farms. Um, we will ask you to park over on the side of the office. Please do not park up front. Um, we will be utilizing the parking up front for our troop leaders, our staff members, and other customers going into our shop. Um, uh, for our purposes, we are picking up on the side door. Um, once you pull in, please park at these designated spots. There will be a lot of parking signs to kind of walk you through it. Um, so if someone else is picking up on your behalf who didn't attain this training, um, they should be able to know where to park. Please, please remain in your vehicle. Um, we want to make sure that this process, along with the majority of the cookie program, is as contactless as possible um, for your safety and ours. Um, so once you arrive, park in your spot. There will be a parking sign at every spot that will indicate a parking number, um, a text number, and then also what we are asking you to text. So once you get there, text your troop number, your girl name, the parking number. Um, we do not need it in full sentences, just kind of text exactly what this is. Um, once we receive that, we'll respond back saying, got it, we'll be out. So we will be pushing out your order. We will be standing next to your car um, where these X's are. We will count the order um, and you'll look at us kind of do the count. Um, you will be handed a clipboard with this form. This will be your order uh, summary. You would be initialing by each of the cookie type to verify that, you know, this has been counted. Um, I confirmed this. Once everything is done, you'll sign here. We'll initial. If you had any money that you're turning in, we'll mark it on here. Um, we'll also give you a copy of this whole thing. That way you have a receipt. We have a receipt. Um, I highly recommend that you take a picture of this. You store it somewhere. Please do not check this. Um, let's say down the road, we might have some mix up with money or packages or something like that. Um, this can be something that we both reference um, to, you know, make sure that we're on the same page. So once everything is done here, we'll load the order um, into your car and, you know, get you on your way. Now, there is a specific requirement that masks are required during pickup. Even though you are not stepping out of your car, we will still be having somewhat of, you know, like handing back and forth the clipboard or it be that we are loading cookies in your car. Um, so please make sure that everyone in the car is masked. Um, we highly recommend if you can make it work to leave the kids at home, um, just because, you know, obviously you'll need space for the cookies if you don't have a large enough trunk or, you know, if you are in a smaller um, passenger vehicle. Um, if the kids are coming, that's completely fine. That's totally understandable. But um, make sure they're masked and if you can talk to them about, you know, the protocol in remaining in vehicle um, and also, you know, to keep them safe. Um, for parents who have done cookies for a while, you guys probably have a way to track your order and you kind of manage your inventory. Um, for parents that are completely new to cookies, we do have a tool here that we created. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you. Um, this is either printable um, or it could be on an Excel workbook with formulas created to auto-calculate um, inventory and change. But the version that we're showing you right now is a Word document that you can customize and print. Um, it'll just kind of, you know, help you track down what you're ordering for the week, uh, when pickup date is, um, you know, you'd be able, it would just kind of be a way for you to calculate total of how many cookies you got, um, how much you owe, how much you've been paying. Um, so up to you. Um, this is available for you to utilize if you choose to. The, there's going to be a physical order form that your troop leader um, will be giving to you, or she might have given it to you already. But that specific order form is for your and your girl to use to manage your customer's order. That is not something that you turn into the troop. We don't need that. The only thing that we need is your submission of the cookie request form online. 
So for example, um, that physical form, you might be calling your neighbor, your grandma to you know, ask for a cookie sale. So you would jot down their order on there um, and then you don't and, you know, count up all of the cookies that all of your customers want and then um, place that order request on the cookie request form to Kate. Once Kate gets that from you along with other parent guardians, she will then order the cookies based on that amount. Um, and once she gives those cookies to you, you will reflect back on the physical order form that you and your girl have been tracking cookies to determine, you know, which uh, cookie goes to which customer. This is the last page of our presentation. Um, these are the links that we highly recommend you booking um, to, you know, have resources during this, the cookie season. GSGIbridge.com. Um, this page here is a one-stop shop for all of your uh, family cookie needs. So it'll provide resources on smart cookies, um, resources on how to create a QR code for her website, um, other program activities as well. So please check that out and please bookmark that. ABC Smart Cookies. This is where you and your girl will manage her inventory, um, create her website, um, generate e-cards to send to customers, um, and a lot of different things on how to manage, you know, the cookie program. So please definitely um, bookmark that. There's also a Smart Cookies app. Um, the app should allow you to collect credit card information, um, or not information, but credit card orders from your customers as well. Um, tinyurl.com slash Kate's cookie form. So this is the form you will be using on a weekly basis to submit your orders to Kate. The QR code here also leads the cookie form. So it just depends on how you want to utilize it. Um, we know that around cookie season, there's a lot of questions, um, a lot of conversations. So again, just to reiterate Kate's contact information here. Um, we highly recommend that if it's a conversation dealing with orders, requesting, um, specific items, anything that, you know, Kate might need to refer back to, um, please email it. Anything that is, um, has a lot of details in it, please email it. Um, please utilize text or call for, um, you know, conversations, questions, anything like that. But when it comes to specific amounts of um, quant cookie quantities or cash or, you know, figuring out discrepancies, please utilize email. That's probably the best way for, you um, us to kind of, you know, track all of the information and also review to make sure that, again, we're on the same page there. Um, if you do choose text, um, you know, or call, please maybe stick with one specific form of communication. So that way, you know, you're not starting the conversation of, um, you know, the, the cookie order that you submitted last week, you started on email and then you continue on text. Um, then, you know, it gets to a situation where we're trying to, you know, track all of the modes of communication. It might, you know, some things might get lost. So um, just to kind of save everyone's time, uh, please, you know, be consistent and we recommend um, utilizing those emails. All right, well, that concludes our um, cookie training. Please let us know if you have any additional questions, but hopefully you and your girl have a safe and fun experience. All right, thank you very much.